Uh, today we'll have a look at how to add a day dimension to our data so that we can analyze um, our data by days and months and years or any of those date or time chunk um, dimensions. So what I have in front of me is I'll start with a very simple table. This is my orders table. And now it has order number and order date and a few other columns. I'm just going to concentrate on these two, the first two. So you see in the order date, I have just a date. So what I want to do is to be able to analyze, for example, the number of orders by a month so that I can extract the month from the date and then see how many orders I had in January, February, and so on. So right now, I couldn't do this analysis because I don't have a month column in this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dimension day table, which is essentially my calendar. And it just has entries for every day of every year, and it has details such as whether it's a weekday and what year it is, and what month it is, and, and whether it's we could add public holidays and anything we need. Um, so the easiest way to create this dimension, um, the dimension day table, is if I open up my Pentaho data integration tool, there is a predefined transformation that will create this for me. It looks like this. Um, without going into the details what it does, it is always in the installation folder of my data integration tool. So I can go to open and find a place where this tool is installed. So I've got it under here, data integration. Then I go into samples and transformations. And somewhere in the middle, it's called general populate date dimension AU. AU is for Australia. And the other one is, I believe, the American format. So I just open that and I'll cancel it. Now, this is what it looks like. All I need to do is add my database connection in the dimension day, the last step, point to that database connection. Hit the SQL button, see if I need to create the table. I'm actually fine because I just created it before. And then I run this transformation. So what I get is a dimension day table, which is a very good starting point for my calendar. So you see it has data scale in the format of year, month, day without um, any dashes or slashes, so it's an integer, which makes it really easy to join with another table. And then it has columns for day name, month name, quarters, and all those useful things. So what I want to do is to be able to join my orders table with the dimension day table. Um, now if we look at the orders table again, it has the order date. But I don't want to join on the date because it's quite a complex join and it's not very perform uh, it's not performing very well usually. So I want to create a date as K that would look like this so that I can join on an integer column. And this is very easy because all I need to do is take the order date and just change the format. Right? We know that the date as K will have a year, month, and day. So in an ETL. I have a table input set which is just getting all the data from my orders table. I am converting the order date to string and the reason I'm doing it is so that I can cut it. Basically I cut that string into year, month and day. Then I put it back together using the calculator and then convert it to integer and call it order date escape. So if we just preview this stage, we'll see that I've changed this entry, 2010-0106, to be 2010-0106 without any spaces or dashes or anything that's not nice. And now it is an integer. So it's just this bit, these four steps, which you can pretty much copy paste into any transformation. And they're almost the same. You just need to go and modify the column names, and they will create new data case. So now I run this transformation, and my new table is the fact order. So if I look at the fact order table, and I'll just go 
because I've run it before. So if I look at this, it's pretty much all the same as orders. But now at the end, I have a order date escape. So now I can join the two tables using order date escape. And if I just create the join in SQL, basically this is what I get. So I get the year number and the month number in a separate column. So I could group by those columns or filter by those columns. So now I have prepared my data. I'm ready to go and do some analysis. The next thing I need to prepare is my metadata. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Tahoe Schema Workbench to create what we call a cube and or a schema. So it's the metadata that describes these two tables and the relation between them. So in the schema, I'm adding a dimension. I call it dim day and I add the table dimension day. Now important is that this dimension is a time dimension rather than a standard dimension. So then I'm adding hierarchy. And in the hierarchy, I'm simply defining year, month, and day. So obviously, year consists of months, and month consists of days. So that's my hierarchy. It's important that I just define the primary key in here, which is my data scheme. So that's the key that will connect this dimension table to our fact order table. Um, now in year, I'm selecting the column year number, and I say it's numeric. Important is that I say it's time years. As soon as the dimension is of type time dimension, all its levels need to be not regular, but time years, months, weeks, or whichever it is. So in month, I do the same. I define time month. In day, I define as a time days. So this is my dim day dimension. Now I add a cube. In the cube, I'm adding a fact order. That's the table that we've just created. So I just drop down, find the table name. Um, and I add one measure. In this case, I want to count the number of orders. So I just add a distinct count on order number. So we'll just count different, uh, the number of different orders. I'm also adding the dimension usage. So this is what connecting my fact order table to the dimension data table. And I need to define the foreign key, which is the order data scale, the one that we've just created in our ETL process. Now the next thing I need to do is just go and publish this to my BI server. And I'm just going to rename this to order demo, because I already have one. Order. So I just do save, save as orders underscore demo. I'll just put it on my desktop. And so to publish, I put in my publish password. This is something that you can set up in your server. So if you know, don't know what it is, ask your server administrator. The username, and password and a URL. And I click OK. I'm getting connected to the repository, so I'm connecting to the BI server. And hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Now I can browse the folders on the BI server. And I'm just going to put it into under resources and metadata. It doesn't really matter. This is the place I choose to put it to. So now it's important to define the correct GND data source. So again, this is something that's defined on the server and it's pointing to the right database. Hit publish, publish successful. Now if I go to my BI server and hit new analysis, that schema becomes available here. This is order demo, orders demo that we've just created. Click OK. And all these fields become available here. So now I can drag and drop them. You see there's my year, month, day. So now I see all my order counts by month. Now I can also do things like filter. And in here, when I filter for a year, I get a long list of years. Also, we'll see that the month 
is now ordered alphabetically, which is not very fancy. Usually you don't want to see months. You want to see the month in a proper order as they come in the year. So I'm going to change two things now. I'm going to put the month in the correct order. And I'm going to allow a filter to select today's year or today's month. So I'm, to do this, I'm going back to my schema. And I'm actually going to open the one I have prepared before. So on month, all we need to do is to add an ordinal column in here. And that ordinal column is the month number. So it's the column that it will use to order the month on the report. And because that month number goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it will order it properly. So problem one solved. The second one is I'm going to add annotations to my year, month, and day. And those annotations, I'm going to call them Analyze Date Format. And this is a particular name you need to use this specific name. So your server will rely on this to be Analyze Date Format and not my pretty analyzer. Then depending on the value of your uh, year, month, or day, or whichever you're using, we need to define the annotations. So for year, having four numbers, four digits, it's the Y, 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 Y. For a month, because we're using the month name, the annotation would be four capital M. If we just use the no one month number, it would be just a one capital M. And because we have a hierarchy, we need to put years and then the month. And so same for the day, I'm just adding 1D because it's a number. So again, I'm going to rename this schema and just save it. And I'm going to publish this up to my server. Same place, publish successful. Let's see, I do a new analyzer report. And I am missing. Let me try again. English. So here is orders one demo. And now we see if I pull a month across. We see a lot of January, but it does start with January. If we pull a year, it will make sense. So we have so many Januaries because we have one January for every year. And the reason they come the reason we get this is because we have a hierarchy. It's looking for a, so January becomes not just a month, it becomes, becomes a particular month within a year. And the reason for this is in this hierarchy. So this allows us, if we select today's month, it won't just select October for every year, it will select October of this particular year. So now if I try to add a filter on the month, it gives me this new option. So before we only had this option, now we can choose a commonly used time period. And for example, if I say current month, we'll see that it uses current year and current month. And so then I can add my order count. I can see the numbers. If I wanted to uh, not have the hierarchy, so if I really wanted to be able to just pull the month and see maybe different years across the top, then I would need to get rid of this hierarchy and take the month out of the hierarchy. Or I could just add another another one of these to the hierarchy and have months separately. So that would allow the cross analysis between months and years. So for example, you could see January across different years, things like that. So to if I get rid of my filter here, again, because I find this view 
kind of confusing. I suggest that you just, if you do want only one month, filter for the year first. Did I do it in day? So filter for, for example, current year, and then you see there's just 12 distinct months, which is exactly what you would expect. And I think that's it to enabling analysis using date dimension. So again, just to summarize what we did, we have used a pre-existing generate dimension date Australia to generate our uh, transformation, to generate our dimension date table. We have then added a few steps to create a data scale, which would connect our fact table, so the orders table in this example, to the, um, to the dimension date table. And then we've created a schema and defined the dimension day as a time dimension, defined year, month, and day in the hierarchy, and added the annotations. Thank you very much.